one amp to rule them all? Hey everybody, Jay Allen here. Welcome back to the channel. I kind of struggle with uh, guitar amplifiers. Um, usually when I'm recording to, you know, a DAW or whatever, I just use the plugins because it's, it's way easier than miking an amplifier and doing all that stuff. And so and when I play out, uh, I'm either playing bass uh, with my band or I play acoustic uh, guitar in a solo and duo uh, type situation. My buddy and I that uh, do the duo together, we want to kind of expand into some, you know, electric guitar uh, tunes. And so we've kind of dabbled around with trying to put a band together and it's kind of a pain in the rear end as some of you that have been in bands or tried to form bands know. And so what we're gonna do is he's gonna play bass, he's got a, a bass six that he plays and then he plays guitar and then I'm gonna play uh, guitar also and then we're gonna use maybe drum tracks or a beat buddy or something like that and kind of expand the acoustic duo into an acoustic electric duo. And so we wanna use uh, real guitar amplifiers. And so I'm trying to find an all-in-one solution that I can plug in uh, my microphone and, and have my vocals come through and, and play an acoustic guitar in it, play electric guitar in it, maybe even bass. And so uh, earlier this spring, Positive Grid came out with uh, this thing here, the Spark Live, which is a four channel, so they call it a smart amp and PA. So it basically has uh, a channel for a uh, guitar. You can plug your guitar in and then that's what gives you all the, uh, the multi-effects. Uh, so basically any pedal you can think of is in the app for it. Uh, so you, you pair your phone or your tablet to it and then you have access to all these uh, different amp models and cabinets and pedals and things like that. So that's on channel one. So then channel two is a quarter inch XLR combo and that has some uh, effects too. There's vocal effects and just kind of like reverb and, and like a preamp and then a, uh, then they say you can plug your bass in there and then they and you can also plug your acoustic guitar in. So, and then they have a third and fourth channel, which is basically a stereo quarter inch input. And the only thing uh, that you can do with that is adjust the volume. There's no effects for that. So to me, it seemed like kind of a uh, the perfect solution because what I was using and what I still have uh, for just acoustic uh, solo, and then sometimes the, we'll use it we each have a portable amp that we'll use for acoustic duo. So we could just set up like in a small venue, each of us just set up our own self-contained amp that has uh, a channel in it for a microphone. We bring our own mics and mic stand. And that way we don't have to drag a PA and everything. So that, that's this Black Star Sonnet 60. And that's a really nice uh, little amp. It's a two channel amp. Uh, and pretty much all it has is reverb, and then it does Bluetooth as well. The, the Spark Live also does Bluetooth. And so you can plug your guitar, your acoustic guitar in here, and it has some shaping or whatever. They all have that stuff, but I never find any of that stuff useful where it mimics certain bodies of guitars or certain types of guitars. It's supposed to, but it, none of it... I, I don't know, I've used a lot of acoustic guitar amps, and none of them seem to to work that shaping or whatever. So I just turned that stuff off. And then this one also has a, a XLR mic and it, it'll do reverb. So this, this was a pretty simple um, setup. Uh, the thing is with this is the DI out doesn't split. So you can't split the vocals and the guitar. And so as we'll find out with the Spark Live, it also does not, it has output. And it's interesting, it's not a, it's a quarter inch output. They don't have the XLR outputs so and it's just stereo the stereo mix coming out of uh, the speaker there's no separation so you can't run uh, the vocals out separately from uh, the guitar or whatever so the big question is is the spark live a suitable replacement for you know the sonnet 60 and you know a regular guitar amp because um, if you're using 
you know, a, even a PA, if you're using a PA or an acoustic amp or something like that, and you maybe want to play acoustic and then switch over to an electric, then you bring your electric amp with you too. So you've got all these amps and everything. So we're going to kind of check it out right now and uh, see, see what it does. Okay, so this is the Spark Live, and I got it all set up here, and uh, uh, I got a microphone into channel two, and the uh, guitar into channel one. I got the cover off of it, so you can see uh, the speakers in it. Uh, and these are, I think, six and a half inch. These are, yeah, six and a half inch, and then there's one inch, they call them compression tweeters, and then there's ports, two ports, inside i guess that's for bass or whatever and so i've got a microphone set up instead of going di out i wanted to kind of hear what the sound sounds like coming out of the speakers so i uh, got my sm57 set up there uh, so we can kind of capture that so i'm going to run through real quick uh, some of the features like i said there's a there's an app and so it's it's the app connects through bluetooth so obviously you just activate the bluetooth on here and start the app and it'll search for the amp and connects to it. So then here we're in channel one, and this is where you can select your amps and your cabinets um, and all that good stuff. And then it has a uh, play along type thing. You can, you can select these uh, different genres of like drum tracks with bass and everything that you can play along to, and you can create a video and you can do all this stuff, which I don't know how much that I will use, but uh, and then the nice thing is, is you can actually save the presets because on the dial here, you can, you have, uh, two banks of presets. Uh, when you press this in and it turns green, I'm not sure which bank that is. If it's A or B, I think it's A and then red is B. And then you have four presets for each bank. So effectively you have eight, uh, presets. And you can do the same thing with the uh, channel two, which is where the uh, vo you know the vocal effects and stuff are. So here you get compression, a preamp, and then reverb, and then so that's your vocal channel. And then you can do eight presets in there too. So you get four on bank A, four on bank B, and uh, so in this sort of presets. You've got a couple acoustic guitar uh, effects, a couple for bass, and then bank A is all vocals. So, and that kind of brings me to the first sort of issue I guess I have, is that if you're gonna use this as an all-in-one uh, solution, it would be great to have an XLR connection for your mic with effects, and then a separate quarter inch input for your acoustic guitar, as well as the quarter inch for the electric guitar. Because even though you can't play the electric and the acoustic at the same time, of course, you know, if you're in a, a duo situation, you could presumably play at the same time. But if you're just using this as a solo thing, um, you could use channel one for both your acoustic and your electric, but then you gotta unplug everything and do that. So it would be really cool if they had the, you know, that third, because it's four channels, but channel three and four is basically just a stereo input. There's no effects on it. There's just a volume control and that's it. So if they would have expanded it to three channel mono with, you know, quarter inch for guitar, XLR quarter inch combo for vocals, XLR quarter inch combo for, uh, you know, acoustic or bass, then I think they would have had most of their bases covered. I don't know. I guess I guess you can use it as a, a keyboard amp too, but you know, I don't know. So um, as far as being versatile for that type of thing, that's kind of one of my hangups about it. But what I'm saying is I, I kind of got this to replace, hoping that it would replace the Black Star, and we'll see. So uh, right off the bat, one, one two, two, let me, let me, Get this record okay so right off the bat i don't know if you can if this is coming through on the uh microphone or not um so this is just a vocal you know channel or vocal effects uh re with a little bit of reverb on it 
and uh, it sounds pretty good, but the, the speakers are so small, <laughs> you know, they're only six and a half inch speakers, and they've got two in there because the interesting thing about this amp is when you have it set vertically like this, it, I, at least from what it sounds like, they say it, well, it concentrates the sound when it's vertical, so I assume that it switches to mono when it's vertical, and then when you turn it sideways, then it does the stereo widening where, it, you know, these things are angled kind of outward and it's supposed to give you a wide uh, sound. I messed around with it out in my garage and set it up on a, a speaker stand, which is, that's cool. You can set it up on a speaker stand. I wish the Black Star you could do that with. Um, and to me, it didn't have a real wide sound and the... Um, the vocals coming through those little six and a half inch speakers sounds really boxy. Well, that's kind of how this sounds coming out of here. It's, uh, and the vocals are really bright. So, um, there's some EQ on the back and then you can set EQ in the app. You, know, you can sort of massage the, the tone, but it's a lot of screwing around that you got to do. So I, I'm pretty sure that the speakers are kind of tuned for electric guitar and you'll hear that in a minute because uh, it sounds phenomenal uh, with an electric guitar going through it. So. Anyway, here's the vocals again. Check, check, check. One, two, one, two. So let's grab a guitar off the wall. As you can see, it sounds pretty good. Hello, hello. Check one, two, one, two. So obviously the effects in it are going to be phenomenal because Positive Grid has been doing, uh, you know, amp modeling and effects for quite a long time. They, they pretty much excel at that. Uh, so that sounds really good. Um, mixing is kind of a challenge. In the app, you can adjust the inputs. Um, as you can see here, it knows it's a microphone input. A little bit. Check, 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 check. You can turn down the guitar. And then the overall volume is, is in here, too. Check, one, 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 two, one, two. And then, of course, you can throw compressors on it and things like that. And then you can actually play music through it. So if you wanted to get onto Spotify or whatever. So you can play Bluetooth. So you can play music through it in Bluetooth mode. It acts as a Bluetooth speaker. And uh, you can adjust the volume of the music through the app. One, two, check. So. When you wake up in the morning and drag yourself out of bed and you try to remember all the stupid things you said. So, let's see, what else can I say? Oh, and then everything is, like, if you don't want to mess with the app, uh, like, say you're out gigging or whatever, and you don't want to mess with the app, you know, it saves all your presets for both, like I said, both channel one and two for the vocals. You can adjust all the EQ and the gain and everything. You can adjust the volume of your music here. You can adjust the volume of the guitar here. Well, your EQ for channel two has to be done in the app, but then you can save those presets. So in, in, the, in the back, you've got your channel two input, your, your presets, the two different banks of presets, and a volume control. And then you've got EQ on the other side, but that's master EQ that affects everything coming out of the speaker. And then, like I said, you've got the output, and then you can do MIDI, so you can control the banks through MIDI. 
Okay, so now the big question is, how does this stack up to an uh, amp like the Black Star when it comes to acoustic and vocals? So let's check that out. Okay, so like I said, if you want to use the vocal channel and uh, the guitar channel, it's like if you're doing acoustic, then you have to use the channel one input, which is kind of geared towards uh, electric guitar, but you can choose acoustic. Too bad, but the vocals to me, just, I don't know, there's something about them that just sound really tinny, like you're singing into a tin can. So let's see if we can adjust this. So these are presets. I got a studio echo vocal lead. Hello, oh, that sounds good, but it needs some. Oh, that sounds really good. So it needs some uh, reverb. There's not a ton of reverb on it. Is that on? Check, 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 check. Check, 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 one, one, two. That's better. But it still, it still sounds like I'm talking into a tin can. Check, 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 there we go. Drop some of the highs, maybe bring up some of the mids. There we go, that's a little better. Hello, one, two, check, one, two. Check, one, 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 two, check. So that's quite a bit better, I think. sounds a little thin. It seems like the reverb is to, like totally gone too. Check, one, two. There we go. I like that. One, two, check, check, check. Well, we went out on the dusty road by the little half past nine. Drove off into the darkness Right out past the county line. So that sounds pretty good. Um, I think it just needs, like, the overall EQ might be. And that you control from the back. I don't know what it's set at you right now. Yeah, it's pretty high. <laughs> I'll just put it all to. I like the little kickstand on the back. That's cool too. And the kickstand you can rotate so you can you can tilt back uh, the amp either in the horizontal or vertical configuration. And then it telescopes out. So one, two, three, one, one. So yeah, that's not bad at all, I think. It sounds pretty good. So now I just want to check out how it compares to the Black Star amp. Because really all I'm trying to do is figure out if I want to keep the Black Star or if this is going to serve as sort of a you know multi-use type uh, uh, amp, you know, PA basically. And so far it's pretty good. And, and another thing is this one's 27 pounds, which is kind of heavy. Uh, the Black Star is 17 pounds. All right, well, so let's switch this up and see how that other amp sounds. Okay, so I got the Black Star set up. And right off the bat, I can tell that the, the Black Star just sounds a lot warmer uh, vocally. 
it's not as thin or, or sort of tinny as the, uh, the Spark. Now, granted, the Spark is designed to be able to play electric guitar, so it's, you know, it's probably tuned to that type of signal. kind of has that boxy sound too and I think it's just because of those six and a half inch speakers so and I'm not really trying to do a shootout between these two because obviously the Black Star does not do the you know the guitar effects um, if you wanted to you could probably run you know an electric uh, effects pedal into the Black Star if you were doing just some simple stuff but it would probably get kind of muddy since that speaker is not designed for uh, electric guitar so but basically what I'm just trying to do is see if Spark Live is gonna kind of replace the need for me to keep uh, the Black Star and I think I think it'll be alright I think it's I mean it's not perfect but for just a solo acoustic like if you wanted to add uh, some electric guitar to it so you could do some ambient stuff or whatever uh, again, you can control it with a pedal. They've got you can either connect a MIDI pedal to it, or you can. They have some pedals available. Uh, uh, Positive Grid has some pedals that you can run with. It. So one's a Bluetooth pedal, and you can change banks and things like that. So the interesting thing is, I got this two days ago, and uh, Positive Grid has announced the Spark 2, which the Spark is the smaller sort of tabletop version of of their amp it was the first amp they came out with i think and uh because positive grid has always had the amp modeling uh stuff that you could you know you can use in your DAW or whatever and so then the spark amp came out and that had all that stuff in it uh and then the app and all that stuff and then they came out the spark mini and then another spark small spark like a mini and then a small small one like you could put on your belt or something and then they came out with the cabinet. Anyway, so then this came out earlier this year, and now they've released the Spark 2, and that has some AI. Everything's got to have AI in it now. So they have some AI thing to make the sound sound good. I don't know, whatever. So, so it'll be interesting to see if they come out with a second generation version of the live that maybe fixes, you know, that has another channel in it because that would be cool. And then they say you can play bass through this, but I haven't done that yet, but I know it's not gonna be very loud. Uh, so I set this up in the garage. It says it's 150 watt uh, RMS, whatever that is, and then peak is 450. But then it says the, the oh, what do you call it? The decibel rating on it. Yeah, RMS. Okay, yeah, so wattage, there it is. Watt power amplifiers, 150 watt RMS, whatever that means, and 450 watt peak. And then under sound pressure level, it says RMS is 118, which isn't super loud, and that's at one meter. And then peak is 121 at SPL at uh, one meter. Um, it's loud, it's definitely loud, but I don't know if it's loud enough to be in a band type situation. I'm gonna try that out on Wednesday when my band has rehearsal with the you know we have live drums and the, the bass and all that stuff and we'll see if it's really loud or not uh, and then the because the ads on positive grid and the YouTube videos for it basically commercials one it looks bigger than it is because it's not really big uh, it's the way they shoot it with the wide angle lens and it's up in the foreground so it looked bigger so when I got it I was like Man, this don't look very big and then another thing is they show it in a band situation and they kind of show it as everything's plugged into it, which I don't know, that's not really, I think it's more of a, I don't know. If you're gonna use it in a band, I would recommend that you use just a regular mic into a PA and then this is your amp. Um, so, but as a solo, 
you know, acoustic or even if you're playing with an electric guitar, maybe you have a person playing cajon or something that you're not super loud, then this would be pretty cool for it. And it's, it would definitely be an excellent practice tool. But you can get those little ones too, which if you're just going to practice with it, those sound great. Because I had one of those for a hot second, and that sounded pretty awesome. So, anyway, I know this is kind of a rambling thing here, but I just wanted to sort of cover this and give you some of my thoughts uh, about it. It's a pretty good, pretty good amplifier. Definitely, definitely a good amplifier uh, for the vocals. I don't know. It's it's a little weak on the vocals, but I think it's it's good enough if you're just going to play in a in a small setting. When they, you know, they show this thing in the in the ads is, you know, the, there's a guy singing and there's a drummer and a bass player and all that other stuff. I don't think you're going to run all your instruments into this. Obviously, you can if you have the microphone plugged into it. Then you lose the channel that you could plug the bass into. So you could do your electric guitar and the vocals, but in a band situation, I don't know. You're still going to have to run out into a PA. But I wouldn't go through this thing, you know, for vocals in a in a band. You know, maybe a small band, but anyway, you get the idea. Anyway, that's kind of my thoughts on uh, the Positive Grid Spark Live. Uh, I was kind of excited when it first came out, but I, you know, you, I, you could pre-order it and you could save some money. I think it was like fifty bucks or something. Uh, retails for five forty-nine. I got it off a of reverb for four something, four ninety-five. I think it was. It was ten, basically fifty dollars off. And I think, I don't know if on Amazon, I think on Amazon it's $5.49. Um, so, yeah, check it out if that's something you're interested in. If uh, you, you play, oh, and that's another thing, you can, you, can, it, you can get a battery for it. Battery's 80 bucks by itself. Um, so you can play it, I think it's 7 hours, 5 hours, something like that. So you would like if you busk or something like that, or you play... You know, because like I play over at the winery and they've got power and everything, but it, you know, it'd be really convenient to be able to set this up with a battery and play wherever you wanted to. So, okay, anyway, thanks for tuning in. Jason Allen Guitar, we'll see you next time.